service provided by Dublin Fire Brigade constantly evolves to meet the changes within a rapidly developing capital. We spent a few days in their training centre on the Malahide Road, where we spoke to firefighters about the various aspects of learning their trade. Donald Petterbridge, a senior member of the force who trains fellow firefighters, spoke to us about the challenges he faced on applying to join. Yeah, yeah it was very tough then, like, and, and still and all, it's, it's, it's tough these days as well, but the numbers are greater, you know? So it's uh, the actual application process now, I suppose, is tougher in a lot of ways. There's a very detailed aptitude test to get in, you know? You never stop training. But the training that you do here is very hard, it's very physical, it's very arduous and we try and put people under more pressure than you would actually endure out in the real world. But the real world, that's real, so that's where the pressure comes on there. So the training is very good here, um, but only when you get out there you can use your trade. The command and control is a huge aspect. What, what they have been, they've been firefighters for their career up to this. So now they've become officers within the fire brigade, so they'd be in charge of a crew at given situations. So they to basically broaden their horizons and be comfortable in the role of stepping into command and control situations. What we're doing here today is we're training firefighters uh, to deal with compartment fires as they develop in a modern type of building construction. Um, in the last 25 years, the style of firefighting that we're using has changed dramatically. Uh, this is because that building construction is now creating rooms, compartments that uh, are very well insulated, uh, high levels of double glazing and triple glazing, so fire behaves differently. As a result of that, we've had to change our tactics. Um, the days of firefighters uh, spraying water around carelessly are gone. Um, water is now applied in an almost surgical manner. Um, the exercises that we're going to show you here today is to demonstrate how fur behaves in a compartment that's well insulated. An empty shipping container was used to demonstrate how a fire develops in modern high-rise buildings. The recruits watched as the officers demonstrated the GRAB, or grab concept. Firstly, the fire can simply go out. Alternatively, it can resume development. The fire was then let grow to a point where it auto-ignites. Finally, it reached a stage which presents firefighters with one of their most dangerous situations, a backdraft. That's what you join the fire brigade for, is to get up there and get dirty and get hot and learn how to control a fire. So that's, that's what you live for. You'd go up there every day if you could. The unique thing about Dublin Fire Brigade is that we're, number one, we're all full time and everybody's a paramedic as well. So we run the ambulance service for Dublin as well as the fire service. So when we arrive, say, at a road traffic accident or a serious fire, everyone is singing off both hymn sheets, basically. But there are times where you obviously have to think very carefully about what you do. And that's why this course is all about if you're committing crews into situations. But your training kicks in at every incident you go to. Your training kicks in. To learn more about the workings of a busy station, we moved on to the headquarters on Townsend Street. Believe it or not, uh, Dublin Fire Brigade was established in 1862 and in 1898 uh, the Chief Fire Officer of the day decided to introduce an ambulance service into Dublin Fire Brigade. So Dublin Fire Brigade is the, one of the oldest ambulance services around in these islands. Uh, so it's over 100, 100 years old, over 100 years. And uh, when I joined Dublin Fire Brigade, I was joining Dublin Fire Ambulance and Rescue Service as a whole. Okay, this is the control centre for Dublin Fire Brigade and for all of Leinster. Yes. You have, um, we have five call takers here, uh, a radio operator separate who actually transmits all the, um, the traffic out to ambulances for engines that are out on the road. And we take rural calls for uh, Leinster and we take Dublin Ambulance calls and Dublin Fire calls here in the centre. Hello, is that uh, about the park, yeah? Okay, Margaret, they're on the way. Thanks very much. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you. Bye.
On arrival at the scene, it became clear that the call was a false alarm. A fire alarm was set off in the building, but protocol within the brigade dictates all calls are treated as emergencies. 